Hello, my name is Peter Rollo. We're 200 nautical miles off the coast of New Zealand, but that's not what this episode is about. This is episode two, where we take our new catamaran to Moria so we can learn how to sail it across the Pacific. But Moria is beautiful. We go swimming with the stingrays and the sharks. We go trekking through a pineapple plantation. All wrapped up in the funkiest, tranciest tunes I can find on the internet. So put your seat back up or down and sit back and relax and enjoy episode two. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. Wow, today is a very, very exciting day for us. Let's go. Okay, Zibora, Papi Depot for the moment, no traffic. You can exit the bus, please. Let's buy on channel one, two, till you are out of Papi. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Over. I know it's alright. You're one of a kind. I'll leave you behind. And all through the night, when we're running blind, I got love on my mind. We've left the harbour and we're about halfway to Moria and we're sailing in 20 knots. We've got two reefs in on the main and one on the Genoa. I hope we're sailing it right because it's our first sail without the captain on board so it's just me and Yogi so we're out here doing it. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's pretty windy and we're just heading to Moria. So yeah it's a big step because it's just our first time out in the boat by ourselves. And we've only had three half days training because the captain got called away on a charter. So with a limited time frame of having to depart for Tonga, we need to get out here and get some practice. So we're going to Moria for the weekend and we're going to really show you around Moria as well. See you soon. So we've been sailing from for about two and a half hours from Tahiti Papiti. And we're just about to arrive at Moria. We're going to Cox Bay. Really enjoyed it. It's our first solo sail. The boat is handling, you know, two to three meter swells like at least. So happy we're just about to enter the reef, but being a newbie, I'm gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna go and concentrate and we'll get the GoPro out there once we're inside. Moria is one of the most strikingly beautiful islands in French Polynesia. Framed by high mountain peaks and a beautiful lagoon creates an atmosphere that takes your mind and your breath away with it. And living on a boat gives you the time to soak it all in. We're heading out for dinner on another boat. It has been a great day and will be a good night. See you later. Yep, good night all, that's us, we're done. It's been busy, been really cool. Going for some food and a gin and tonic. Wow, it's just so peaceful. Um, I think it was five or six years ago, can't, we'd have to look it up, but there's a beautiful French restaurant over there. And we were sitting there having the beautiful lobster sauce something, which I think we're gonna have to go back there tomorrow night and suss it out, we'll take you. But we were looking, sitting there, looking out at an anchored yacht, and 
anchored yacht <laughs> um, and it was really when the dream was really stoking on that we wanted to go and cruise around the world and live on a boat and how crazy that we didn't know we we're going to end up buying a boat in Tahiti it could have been Florida or it could have been Europe or whatever but how crazy it is that we're now anchored five years later outside the restaurant that we were sitting here dreaming about it's just amazing crazy Oh, that feels so nice. Warm? Yep. Well, this has got to be the most beautiful spot I've ever been for a swim. Going back in. Whew. Oh, I couldn't think of a better place to go for my first swim off the back of our boat. Just in a beautiful tropical island bay quite remote, towering cliffs all around us. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to sleep tonight, I'm so excited. After a couple of days of relaxing, it was time to hop in the dinghy to go down the lagoon and find the stingrays and the sharks. crazy shallow, the dinghy outboard hit a couple of times on the coral because there wasn't space for two boats to pass, so very difficult to get here, but we're at the touristy spot where they feed the stingrays and the sharks and we're about to go swimming with them. These stingrays are up to 1.2 metres in disc width. They feed primarily on invertebrates and fish they find in the sand beds. And all the time while you're snorkeling in Moria, they're an iconic species and they're everywhere. Here is a grey reef shark, and they can grow up to 2 metres in size. If it's your first time being in the water with sharks, it will really get your blood pumping as it did for us. However, they seemed relaxed, they kept a good distance, and we found it a good chance to build our confidence for future scuba diving with sharks. Oh, that was really, really good. Stingrays everywhere, saw a couple of sharks, one of the sharks even looked pregnant, so yeah, it had a good time. It's kind of like the stingrays are friendly dogs, but I still keep my distance. Little kids are touching them, there's other fish, they're giant trevellies, um, it's a crazy, crazy tourist spot. So here is my DJI Mavic Air drone. It's a fold-up travel drone and I absolutely love it. You just unfold the arms like this and it takes the most fantastic video to have a look.
And if you don't own a sailboat, you can catch a flight to Papiti from San Francisco, typically costing 940 US dollars return. Or you could fly from Auckland to Papiti at typically 1200 New Zealand dollars return. And then it's only a short taxi ride from the airport for about 20 US dollars to the ferry terminal. The ferries are fast, they're cheap at about $30 USD. It's not boring to be on the ferry. And 50 minutes later, you'll be in Moria. The accommodations are high quality, like this international resort, the Hilton. We have visited twice now, once on holiday, and now with a sailboat, and we have loved, loved, loved Moria. Wow, it's so peaceful waking up here in Moria with this beauty to look at. Compared to the Papiti Marina with four lanes of road just across from us, have a listen to Papiti. So the peace and quiet here was outstanding. So yesterday we took you swimming with the stingrays and the sharks, and today we're going trekking for about three to four hours with some friends from another boat, and they've done it before, so we just get to go along for the ride, don't have to think about it. But I think it's gonna be very, very sweaty. We've got four liters of water on board, um, let's see how we go, eh? But let's go have a look! Oh, I nearly forgot to mention, we're going to be trekking through a pineapple plantation. Yep. Yeah, we'll get everybody out. We walked through the villages as we climbed inland upwards towards the plantation. I look at the serene local properties and dream about what it might be like to own a house in a tropical paradise. Moria is the pineapple growing centre of French Polynesia where they grow year round in the rich volcanic soil. Moria has over 600 acres of pineapple plantations making it the most cultivated plant on Moria. There is also a juice factory which also makes a pineapple wine. What are you up to Jeremy? Well, I'm looking at this gigantic pineapple here. It's still not ripe and it's huge. So it's actually going to get even a little bit bigger. It's yeah. so tempting to not take one, but... That'll be a good one. Well, they do belong to somebody else. So. <laughs> we got to do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. On the camera, do the right yeah, yeah. thing. Pineapples are an excellent source of vitamin C, vitamin B1, manganese and fibre. These are queen pineapples. They're sweet and juicy with a highly fragrant or perfume flavor. And it takes about two years to grow one. So have a look at this above the pineapple fields. We've got awesome mountains all the way around us. It's like we're in the caldera of the volcano. With a little bit of Googling, I found that the pineapple was indigenous to South America. And the pineapple was said to originate from the area between southern Brazil, Paraguay, and was spread around the world by British and Spanish oh, explorers. Baby and that's a lot of banana, Misha. Yeah. And the cool thing is that the banana trees they can only produce one stock of bananas. You could have a Misha so we're just getting right into the hills now, and it's all getting a little bit King Kong on the jungle. And just shout out to my mate Misha here from Mr. Boy Boat. So let's keep walking, eh? Jeremy's just it's related sampling it's some ginger root so? that's it's ginger no I don't think so close I don't know Jeremy's done the taste test <laughs> it's, it's not right no right okay well. yeah it's chestnuts so they collected the chestnuts here oh yeah look it's full of chestnuts here you want to picture it's a chestnut and the nut is inside there. We've got a little bit lost because I think our Russian guide has not drunk enough vodka. <laughs> so I think we need to have a few shots. <laughs> I think she went that way. Oh, because she was. Coke is a treat for us. We don't normally drink Coke. <laughs> 
the signs are kind of posted to show coming up from this way. So I think you might be right, Svieta, because the way the signs are angled, they're designed to be seen from this location, not that location. So I, I, think, I think you're on to something here. Oh, well, the team has made a decision. So we've made it up into the tree line now and it's quite good it's it's a lot cooler and we're just heading up towards those big cliffs i'm not sure because i'm not the leader on this trick i'm not sure how far we're going to go but i'm hoping we get right up to these big cliffs or something and i can put the drone up so this is start to some historical sites um we'll probably see a bit more as we go further in crazy but all around here is just ruins from where they used to live up here all scattered through the bush apparently the population was much larger the island was full of people like thousands and thousands of more than there are here today we were just thinking that they would have had an awesome life here. Lots of fishing, lots of fruit and breadfruit growing in the islands. Like if it wasn't a time of war, which you know there would have been sometimes, I think they would have had a really, really nice life living here in Tahiti hundreds if not thousands of years ago. We hit him. So we made it. It's um it's a breathtaking view. So this concludes our five day break at Moria. It was a short stay as we needed to continue servicing and preparing Coco to depart French Polynesia before our three month visa expires. So in the next episode we overnight sail to the most succulent destination of Bora Bora and then depart for a 9.5 day 1300 nautical mile sail direct to Tonga. Committing to long ocean passages so soon after purchasing a boat is certainly a challenge and we need to get on with it. In Tonga we visit a local plantation and cook Tongan style with the locals. So thanks for watching and a special thanks to Jeremy, Misha and Svetlana of Mistral Boy for leading us on the pineapple plantation trek. See you again soon for more travel log goodness and I am Peter Rollo and it's night night from me. A cruiser friend that helped me with a lot of advice when I was just getting started now has his boat for sale. It is a 2014 Fontaine Peugeot Lipari 41 owner's version, similar to this one that I found a video of online. I've been on his boat and the design is very spacious. It is available in French Polynesia and I've included the listing broker's information in the video summary below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.